Hello and welcome to the latest episode of my Knitting and Crochet podcast. My name on Instagram is Orchid's Heart and I am living in Birmingham in England and I haven't done a video in quite a while. <laughs> uh, life stuff has happened, things have been very busy, um, I just not had as much energy as I normally do uh, so I'm only just getting around to sitting down and recording so I think it has been over a month um, so sorry about that. So yeah I have a few things to share with you, I have a bit of a news life update to share with you, um, some finished projects, some whips and a little bit of acquisitions at the end. Um, so yeah I don't think it'll be a long one um, but I did want to share with you what I've been up to. Um, if I get a bit embarrassed and awkward it's because my partner is popping in and out of the house, um, he's fixing my bike up for me at the moment. Um, Probably he'll be coming in in a minute and he's probably going to hear me and I'm going to feel really weird and awkward, but there we go. So I'll start with my first finished object and that is my grow hat. And I've done it again. I've started this before and I started talking about my grow hat and then realised that actually I'm meant to be talking about what I'm wearing. Do I start a third time? <laughs> oh, this is going well. You can tell I've not done this in a while. I am wearing, let's take it back. I am wearing two knits because I'm cold. I'm wearing my Lax sweater by Caitlin Hunter. And this is knit in Yarnadelic by John Arburn and Fleece, I think, by West Yorkshire Spinners. I know the color is called Fossil. I do not rate this pattern at all. I talked about it quite a lot in a video where the thumbnail, the picture is of this jumper. So if you're interested to know more about it, then please see that video. But I don't think the pattern was very, very well written. I don't think it's very well fitting. And my version isn't very much like the original pattern because I took quite a lot out of it. Um, so I really love my version, but I would not recommend the pattern. And over the top, I am wearing a Felix pullover which I steeked into a cardigan because I don't like knitting flat. And this is in some DK Rowan with a strand of mohair, so quite a basic cardigan. I knit it a size bigger than um, I was supposed to to give it more of an oversized fit. And um, yes, it's a bit slouchy. Um, the neck has stretched out a little bit, but um, thankfully not too much that it's annoying. And I plan to knit another Felix cardigan like this at some point. You can get the Felix cardigan as a pattern for a cardigan, which you knit flat. Um, but I just didn't want to do all that purling. I thought it was much easier to put like a steep column down the middle and just cut it open and do a button band. So that's what I've done. So yeah, going back to finished objects. <laughs> um, my first finished object is my grow hat. And it has this really lovely like leaf um, branch sort of detail up the side of it. I'll try and stick a photo in and I knit it using Sawkill Farm yarn. Um, it is a fifty percent Sawkill Farm wool, fifty percent domestic merino. I think it's single ply um, and it's in the colour Harvest Heathered and it's this really beautiful ochre gold colour. And I still think I have half a skein left, so I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. Um, I really, really like the colour, I really like the label, um, but it's quite a thick and thin yarn, and so there definitely are some places where I can kind of see the light through the hat a little bit, um, where it was a bit thin around where I was doing the decreases at the top, and it did break if you pulled on it. Um, but it does feel very nice, rustic definitely, but it does feel nice. I really like the colour and it did bloom quite a lot when blocking actually. Um, so I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with the rest of it because I don't think it'd be very good for something that needs to stand up to any kind of abrasion, like mittens or something like that. I think maybe a cowl or to put into a colour work jumper of some sort. So it probably is going to go sit in stash for quite a while because I haven't got any immediate thoughts about what I could use it for. Um, but yeah. I, I do love the hat, the only thing is it does kind of worm its way off my head a bit when I'm wearing it. So I don't know whether it's because I did knit it a bit bigger than the pattern suggested 
because quite a few people said that because it's only one size um the pattern came out a little bit small and so i think the pattern stitch repeat is like 18 stitches or something so quite a few people cast on an extra 18 stitches or however much the stitch repeat was um and just made it like one stitch repeat bigger and i do think maybe it would have been too small without that but i do also wonder if it's that looseness that makes it worm off um she does suggest that if your hat comes out a bit big that you could put some elastic in the brim um but i'm not sure if i would want elastic in my hat or not but if you think that it's because it's too small that it kind of worms up you know what i mean like it just sort of rubs up and so you have it on for like a minute or two and then suddenly it's sort of halfway up your head um if that is because it's too small let me know um because i'm not actually that sure and then maybe i would consider putting the elastic in i don't know but um it was quite a quick knit most of the hats i've knit before have been ribbed hats and they take me absolutely forever considering this is half rib and then like a little bit of texture and then just stocking it um i actually found it quite quick so i did really enjoy it and it has made me think maybe ribbed hats are not the way forward for me but then i don't have that worming problem with my ribbed hat so maybe it's not i don't know i don't know does anyone else have a problem with hats just going when you wear it or is it just me i don't know anyway my next finished object has been a long-term whip and it was one of my languishing whips i mentioned in one of my most recent videos and i said i wanted to finish some of my languishing whips this year and so this is the first one And so this is the Colour Craze Shawl by Tammy Gore. I think this is the third time I tried to knit this pattern because I just wasn't enjoying my yarn and colour combination to my previous two attempts. Um, and if I'm honest, I did have a bit of a few moments where I was like, am I actually ever going to wear this? This is a bit intense colour wise. I mean, I know it's Colour Craze Shawl, but like that's quite full on and busy for me. Um, but I actually really like it. So it's all in naturally dyed yarns. Um, some of it, most of it is Natural Sock Full Apply by William Mama Fibre Co. And then I used a variegated skein of BFL Sock Yarn by Handmade Over Yonder. And it's an eco printed yarn. I've shared her yarn before. I really like it. And that's the variegated one. Um, and then I used a little bit of scrap left over. Um, it's like a silk linen blend by Woolen Flower, and that's the goldy yellow. Now, the really interesting thing about this is, um, when I did my bind off, I ran out of the yarn I was using, and I actually used two different yarns um, to bind it off. I don't know if you can see that there. If you can't, I might need to put a picture in. And these yarns, believe it or not, before I blocked it, were the same colour. Like, you really couldn't tell them apart. I then soaked this in just water no detergent no soap in an old chipped enamel bowl and one of the yarns went purple so this section here was very similar in color to this section this stripy section here like you really couldn't see the stripes apart from the pinky yarn because the colors were so close um but it's got a completely different color now i was talking to my partner and he said there is probably iron where the enamel has chipped and so if you know anything about natural dyeing iron is a modifier and that does affect the color of natural dyes so i mean that's why i didn't put soap in it because i couldn't be bothered to get my soap that was ph neutral because it's also about the ph um to soak it in so i did just water thinking that would be enough to like fluff it up but i just thought it was really interesting how the color changed so much and that was a, well, they're both actually um, Woolly Mammoth Fibre Co. skeins. This one was um, Natural Sock and this one was a bit of um, Gotland blend. So yeah, it's a nice size and shape. The only other modifications I did was I did a stretchy edge. Um, so I did the edge a bit differently to how the pattern suggests. And I have a reel on my Instagram page um kind of explaining what i mean for doing that stretchy edge i'll try and remember to link it below 
um, but it's quite easy but a bit tricky to explain um, and it gives you like a much stretchier edge to the shawl and it means you get less of that kind of curly um, like with my other shawls in the past the edge has been when you do like knit to yarn over every row they get really tight and seized up and get really curly and I don't like the way it looks and so this makes it lie a lot flatter so you don't get that curliness and then I also did an eye cord bind off to match my stretchy eye cord edge and so I'm really happy with it it's really squishy it's really soft it's really cozy and though there's a lot of colours in there I think I probably will wear it um, especially maybe now going into spring it makes me quite happy so yeah so here is where I'm going to share my next finished object which just sort of tie into the news which I'm a bit nervous about saying to be honest so I have mentioned that I really wasn't very well before Christmas and into the new year um I am expecting my first baby this summer which I'm a bit nervous about saying out loud because it wasn't a 100% smooth journey to get there although probably smoother than most um and we're about halfway through now so I feel a bit safer saying it now um but that is why I've been a bit quieter and not done so much knitting because I really did not feel very good for the first three months um I was off work a lot didn't really get out of bed for three weeks um mostly out of exhaustion rather than sickness to be honest although the sickness did play a big part in it um and i it floored me i wasn't expecting it to be that bad <laughs> maybe a bit naive i don't know um and i really went off knitting i just couldn't do it i didn't want to read didn't want to watch tv didn't really want to do anything um and after christmas i started to feel a bit better but anything that required any real thought just was not happening anything that required you know like colour work or texture or picking up brioche again like I only picked up that shawl probably a couple of weeks ago to finish it because there wasn't that much left to do uh just no and so I had a sweater's quantity of this really lovely brown yarn from um my trip to Rhinebeck and I have shared this jumper um I think as a whip before um but it's now finished and worn a lot actually and again, I might need to stick a photo of this in. So I wanted to pick a really simple, cosy project to use this really lovely yarn I bought on holiday, which is the Adirondack. I'm sorry, people keep telling me how to say it and I keep forgetting. But yeah, um, DK Yarn by Battenkel Fibres and it's in an undyed colourway. And I wanted to knit a jumper that was a bit oversized, a bit longer, with a split hem um, that I could wear as I start getting a bit bigger. Because I can still wear, as you can see, I am still wearing my own knits. Um, but, you know, there are days where all I want to wear is a jumper and leggings. And pretty much working from home, this is what I've been wearing. This jumper and my leggings. So the original pattern doesn't have a split hem. But I'd seen that a few, um, this was coming. I'm recording. Great to done. Thank you. Thank you. He's fixed my bike. Um, I'd seen a few people doing split hems. And I thought that might be quite good to accommodate my growing waist, um, which is now growing at an alarmingly shocking rate. And um, it's just been really comfy. So that was a modification. Um, and I think I added a few more stitches on so that I could do, is it a slip stitch edge or an eye cord edge, just to make it look a bit neater. Again, I'll, I'll try and stick a photo in. Um, and I wasn't sure about the high neck to start with, because I think when I first finished it, it came out quite tight but with a bit of wearing it has loosened up a bit and it's now really really cozy um my partner says i look like a french person when i wear it he must think that french people have high neck jumpers i don't know um but it's been really perfect i can wear it over another jumper if i need to um but also when i feel really claustrophobic and like everything's too tight um it is quite comfortable so i'm really enjoying it the yarn has bubbled quite a lot 
but I think if I depilled it, it would probably clean up really well. And I'm not exaggerating to say I've worn this pretty much every day since I cast it off. I think I even slept in it once. Um, me sleeping in my jumpers is, is not abnormal, I get really cold. Um, but yeah, so that is my biggest finished project in the last couple of months. Yeah. I don't know what's going on downstairs. But yeah, there we go. Um, really lovely. I do really recommend this pattern. It was really easy and straightforward. It's a DK weight pattern. It's by My Favourite Things Knitwear. Um, and it's just really easy and straightforward and classic looking. Um, yeah, and just lovely. I think a few people maybe commented that it got a bit boring because there's so much stock in it in the body because it is a bit oversized. Um, but honestly, where I was at that point in time, it's exactly what I needed. A lot of not really thinking. So there we go. So I have two whips to share with you. Um, the first one, I haven't got very far. Um, I cast this on the other day and I've just done the neck. I'm a little bit apprehensive about the neck. So this is going to be the Tuku by Petite Knit. Petite Knitter. The one that lives in the Arctic. Um, and I am knitting this, as mentioned before, in Woolen, Woolen Twine's Thrive. And I finally set it on getting the Minat Sol, which is an alternative to mohair. Um, I was actually watching the interview with Kanga Rose, who designs these yarns, on the Fruity Nitty podcast the other day, and it was really interesting. So this Minat Sol yarn is like a mohair alternative using fibres that are more eco-friendly and sustainable than traditional mohair. Um, because apparently silk, even if it's cruelty free, isn't actually that cruelty free. Um, and this is made up of tensile instead of nylon, which is a tree based fibre, it's made from wood. Um, and it's quite sort of shiny like silk. So it's made from tensile, baby alpaca, which is why it is fluffy and a little bit of merino. And so I'm holding those two together. And then my contrast colour will be this one with, so I'm trying to be really careful with the Thrive yarn because it's quite delicate with this one. Hmm. I think I might have actually have just, yes, I've just broken it from the, uh, uh, I was trying not to do that. So these are my yarns. Wow, now it's separated from the, uh, so if you've not used unspun yarn before, you will know that it does break quite easily, um, which is what's just happened, but it's fine. I, I can reattach it again easily enough. So, I mean, this neck, it has got quite a deep neck on the pattern, but I mean, that doesn't really look proportionally quite right. But I decided if it wasn't, that I would simply do like a folded over neck and, and sew it down. So we'll see. Um, I've just put a lifeline in, in case for whatever reason I need to try and rip back. Although ripping back with this yarn would be quite difficult because of the unspun nature. But yeah, I, I'm looking forward now to starting the short rows and then the colour work. Kind of stashing all of the spare yarn in here. Um, but I probably will put the whip in a box because I find it a bit easier when knitting with unspun to have it in a box rather than a project bag because of how delicate it is and so when you're pulling the yarn out um, it's better to have it on a tray or a box I find and this will be a project very much that I'll be working on from home and the reason why I'm doing it now even though it's quite an autumnal winter project is because it struck me as being not something I want to knit with but I thought it might be a little bit tricky um, and so I'm kind of thinking of trying to do my trickier projects now and then saving up some easier projects for later in the year when I've got less headspace where I need to pick up and put things down without worrying about them too much which definitely would not be how I feel about the unspun. So I have one more whip to share and then small amount of acquisitions. Oof. 
so I'm really lucky and my mum and some of my other family members have done quite a lot of knitting for the baby already um, and being that it's going to be a summer baby I am not really knitting newborn things because I've already got quite a few things I'm probably going to inherit a few things and you only need so much for one child right so I have been thinking strategically about what couple of things I will knit because I'm not going to go baby knitting mad this is not going to become a baby knitting podcast um, but I do want to obviously knit a couple of things for my first child um, and so I settled on what's it called oh I have no idea how you say that Renouzette onesie I mean I'm going to go ahead and say that she's Finnish because apparently the inspiration is for a fern species called maidenhair spleenwort and Renouzette means maidenhair spleenwort in Finnish and so the texture the pattern is the same as what's on the grow hat actually and i have knitted it in a yarn by camera rose again that i haven't got hope in hell i'm pronouncing in a color that i can presume means seagrass and it's this lovely light teal color and this yarn is 100 percent organic wool um it is a bit rustic and maybe a bold choice for a baby knit however it is an outer garment um so i think it'd be fine and um it wasn't too expensive actually it was about five pounds a ball and the colors were really really lovely so this is a dk weight project and i'm knitting the three to six month size and i needed five balls so it's actually a hell of a lot of knitting for something for such a tiny person And, um, you know, if you want to do like a nice gift knit um, for a baby or a child or for yourself, I actually really recommend this pattern. I've only really got the hood left to do. It's going to have a hood and then I've got to weave in the ends and put the buttons on. So it is like an outer onesie. Um, but it's really well thought out, the pattern. It's got short rows in the neck, short rows in the crotch and butt for the like nappy space. Um, it's made of garter, so it does stretch out and stretch down quite a lot, so it's quite flexible in sizing. The cast on for the neck, which I didn't do quite right, but it's really neat and structured. Um, you know, the pattern's really lovely. The I-cord edge down the front, you do it at the same time as the rest of it. Um, there's no seaming, it's all one piece. And um, though there are a few points like the cast on edge that were quite confusing and difficult, um, there are videos for all of it, so if you don't understand the pattern, you can watch her do it. It's really, really good. Um, I started this just as, as I was starting to get my brain back, <laughs> and I was rather overwhelmed. I did find it a bit stressful, um, but to be honest, once you watch the videos and get going and do it one step at a time, it's not that bad. And then before you know it, it's all stocking up. You know and it's just separating for sleeves and normal stuff so um yeah really really recommend and so i've knit the three to six month size because my baby's coming end of july and i thought by the time it gets cold that might be the rough size that it is and i might even go ahead and knit the next size up already um before it comes we shall see um i am undecided whether i think the pattern is a bit feminine or not as it stands at the moment, we don't know what we're having. I find out in less than a week, hopefully. Um, so that might affect my decision whether I make the next size up or not. But again, I feel like this is not something that I will be knitting with newborn baby brain, um, unless I manage to get to like, I don't know, this point and then left the rest for afterwards because the rest isn't that bad. Um, but yeah. We'll see and but i'm sure doing it a second time would be much easier um but it's a very enjoyable project there's always something going on um I've, I've really enjoyed it but it's been on the needles for quite a while maybe two months and so i'm quite ready for it to be off 
um, <laughs> and this is a cute project bag that my friend gave me for my birthday, um, which was around the time I started probably knitting this. Um, the maker I think is on the label. No, it's not. So I'm afraid I have no idea. Um, but I would imagine she bought it off Etsy in England. It's just really cute. It's got loads of cute woodland animals on it. I hope it's not getting too dark, but I'm nearly done. I hope I'm not whizzing through this too much. So I do want to apologise to the person who did comment on my last video saying she thought she could see a baby bump and I deleted her comment. Um, I wasn't ready for you guys to know yet. Um, I'm not sure I was ever going to be ready, um, but I missed recording these videos and I couldn't. I can't really hide it anymore. I don't think what I'm wearing right now is that obvious, um, but some, some outfits it really is. So as of next week, it is halfway through. And you know, I am starting to knit a couple of baby things. I'm not gonna do loads of baby knitting, um, but you know, probably I'll share on Instagram a week or so after this video goes up, and then I can share with you some of the other creative things I've been getting up to whilst preparing for the baby, because I am making a couple of things like sewing and stuff. And um, obviously it's just a big part of my life at the moment, you know, it's really affecting pretty much everything. So yeah, you know, there we go. Um, so the other week, whilst I was feeling quite sorry for myself, because I wasn't feeling very well, um, Loop London announced that they were stocking, they were going to be stocking some yarn by a Danish natural dyeing company who have been following for quite a while. I think Fiber Tales has used some of the yarn to knit something before. Um, Inga from Knitting Traditions definitely has. And yeah, the yarn has just cropped up a few times. I think Will and Time went to go see them. I don't know, but it's not a yarn I can get because buying things from Europe is just, it's just expensive with custom charges and stuff like that. I think it might actually be easier to buy stuff from America for us now than Europe, providing you spent under a certain amount of money. So I was really excited when Luke London said that they were going to be stocking these kits. And so I looked up how much money it cost to buy a skein of the yarn in Denmark, wherever the company is, um, to try and work out roughly how much the yarn would be buying it from Loop, um, thinking about whether I wanted to buy the yarn for the jumper they'd been promoting it for, because I really liked the jumper. It was a pattern by um, Tetty Knit Garden. Um, and I thought, yeah, I'd really like to add that to my queue perfect it's absolutely like my colors my style love it um and it looked like the yarn would be about 22 pounds a skein it obviously didn't account for the fact that um customs charges and all the rest of it and i thought oh, okay so i probably need four skeins so that's a bit indulgent but like a nice treat maybe i'll do it loop then did announce the kits and it was way more than that it was like over 100 pounds for the kit to knit my size and I thought, yeah, no, I'm not doing that. I can't stretch to an over £100 jumper at the moment. I think it might have been £122 or something. And that's not including the pattern. That's just the yarn, I think. So I was like, yeah, no, it's probably not going to happen. Anyway, they did a giveaway. And I thought, what the hell? I'll put my name in for it. And oh my God, how lucky am I? I won. <laughs> So they said 4,000 people put their name in and I was the one out of 4,000 people that won it. So I feel very, very blessed. Um, it really made my week because as I'm entering this new phase of life, I probably do need to rein in the spending on my creative hobbies um, because I don't know what the situation is like in your country, but in this country, you don't get maternity pay for the whole time you're off. I think it's for the first half. And then you get half your pay for three months and then you get no pay for three months. Um, obviously, we can have all these extra expenditures of having a third person in the house. And I want to enjoy maternity leave. I don't want to be stuck at home with no money to spend. I want to be able to take my baby to the cafe and eat nice cake. Um, <laughs> because how often do you get a year off? So I do want to, when I get to a position where I can go out and enjoy it, I want to go out and enjoy it. Um, so maybe spending £100 on yarn won't be something I'll be doing. Um, you know, within reason, I'm still going to be knitting. So I was really excited to win this. So let me show you. The kit contained um, 
yarn the main color this and then this is the contrast color and this is a picture of the pattern so it's the Polina pullover by Teti Lutsak she's a Ukrainian designer but I believe she actually lives in Copenhagen or somewhere um, I mean those colours are just so me and I'm really enjoying this new sort of shape of a high neck and like an oversized body I think knitting this maybe late summer or autumn next year this might be really good for a postpartum body because it won't be tight because a lot of my current knits are cropped tight jumpers and they are still working for me at the moment um, but I do wonder if something like the jumper I've just knitted and hopefully um, the tuku that I'm knitting now, that more generous fit maybe might feel more comfortable um, with my change in shape. I don't know. Um, but yes, yeah, so I don't think I'm going to cast this on right away. I think I'm going to save it as a treat for later in the year when I feel like I need a bit of a pick me up or a, a nice happy cast on because I do have some nice projects already planned for this side of the year. And I do feel like, it, because it's quite, you know, it's colour work. I'm quite good at colour work now. Well, I say that, but, you know, I'm good enough. I don't find colour work hard. Um, I think maybe this could be quite a good project. Maybe not for right away after the baby comes, but maybe in the autumn when I feel a bit more settled. And because the kit came from the company itself, um, the two winners that they did, because they did a giveaway and so did Loop London, and um, they gave away like this kit for the biggest size and so actually I have more yarn than I need so I have four skeins of the undyed and one skein of the contrast colour and it is a lamb's wool I believe the lamb's wool is from New Zealand and then the gold is in the colour heather but the yarn is the number three and it's 450 metres per 100 grams so it's kind of like a light fingering um, but I definitely have one too many, but I think it might be one and a half too many and then half of this too much. Um, so there will be quite a lot left over. So I might knit a really gorgeous accessory in one. I might save it for some kind of colour work shawl. Or inspired by knitting traditions, I might knit like a really gorgeous baby thing. I don't know. A huge Sainsbury's truck, truck has just pulled upon our curb. St. Breeze is a supermarket for non-British people. It's like on the pavement outside the house. It was a bit intense. But yeah, so that was a really lovely gift. Um, so it is gifted, but not gifted because it was a prize. So it's not gifted to me because I'm doing these videos. I literally just want it as a prize. So it's not marked as ad gifted because that's not what it is. Um, and it came in this really lovely tote bag, like a really substantial tote bag. So yes. This has been hanging on my door handle, um, but probably I am going to put it away now for a little while. Uh, maybe not just yet, maybe I'll have it out and admire it a bit longer, just because as it starts to get warmer, I do start to worry about the bugs. Right, the light is definitely going now, but I'm on my last thing. So my flexibility is definitely not as good as it was. Oof. Um, and that is an acquisition that I did buy. So it was a leap year this year and No Frills Knitting, which is a really lovely yarn shop in Bristol, which I've never been to, but I have ordered from a few times, um, run by a lovely person called Meg, who is just really supportive and, you know, happy to help you on Instagram. Or um, I believe my mum's actually rang her up on the phone to talk to her about, because she wanted to buy some yarn for a knitting project. And I tried to explain to my mum what she needed to get, um, but she just wanted to talk to the woman who ran the shop. <laughs> um, and so she did. Um, and I believe Meg was really helpful to her over the phone, um, which I think is really lovely. So, but anyway, Meg was doing 20% off for uh, Leap Year. And I couldn't resist. At this point, I think it was a couple of hours before I found out I'd won the yarn kit. Otherwise, perhaps I wouldn't have been so indulgent because this is a lot of yarn for me. Um, but at that point, I didn't know that I'd won, I'd won the kit. So I ordered this box of yarn. And if it has gone too dark now for you to really see, I will put in a picture. I'm hoping because I'm in the window, it's, it's not that bad. 
um i ordered yarn for a couple of projects so i ordered two skeins of knitting for olive in the copper color in the pure silk and this is to knit a summer tank top i think it's called the oak tank um i will have to put in the notes below the name of the pattern it's um got like a pretty lace bottom and then like a bit of a texture on the main part of the tank um and i thought that might be a nice easy summer knit to do um because i'm going to be off for a month i think before the baby comes because of annual leave um and it might be really hot so i thought it'd be nice to have something exciting to look forward to knit on then i also bought maybe a skimpy um sweaters quantity of knitting for olive um soft sock mohair again in the copper color so i bought four of these which gives me about 900 meters which i think is enough for me to do a sweater for myself i did want to get some let low p to pair with it and have like a let low p mohair jumper um, but she didn't have the right color let low p in stock so i just got the mohair because this is the expensive one this is the one that i want to get 20 percent off on if i'm going to get 20 percent off a yarn um, and if I don't end up knitting it with that low P and then I use another yarn instead, that's totally okay. Um, but I, I'm thinking like later this year, I might want easy, simple patterns in lovely yarns. And so this could be, you know, a Felix pullover, a Felix cardigan, you know, I could do this in orange, um, etc. Um, and it might be quite nice to have those easy projects in the back of my mind when trying to be creative is not what my brain wants to do and with that in mind i also bought yarn for are they two different dye lots they look slightly different 1665 no they say they're the same let's just be me i bought um so fiber tales recently released like a shawl scarf pattern inspired by the rolling hills and she did hers in in a similar green colour but it wasn't this colour and it was in Plutilope with mohair. Um, I think the Plutilope colour she chose was a different dark green. Mine is the... There's a number on here, I don't know if I can see it. I think it's the Forest Heather. 1421 and it's the green that has lots of flecks of blue and yellow in it. So I have bought a couple of plates of this before, I've knit a couple of hats in it um, that never seem to come out the right size and so I think I have two half plates already um, and she only had one in stock so I'm hoping that I have two plates equivalent of this and then it said I needed three skeins of mohair um, for this project and again it looks like it'd be quite a simple um, project but very beautiful. Um, and Plato Lopi Unspun is a bit easier to manage than other unspuns. It's got like a longer staple length because it's Icelandic, so it's not quite so fragile. And this is the Kremke Solwall Silky Kid. I did want to get um, Knitting for Olive in a green colour, but she didn't have any in stock. This was the only dark green mohair she had in stock, I think. Um, but it's like a standard mohair silk. Um, I, I think it will be, you know, really lovely. I do like the Knitting for Olive, it has a bit of like a glowy sheen to the core strand. This doesn't, it's a bit more matte, um, but you know, I think it will come out lovely and that's the main thing. And I really like how the Pluto has the blues and yellows in it. So these yarns are definitely going to go away for the autumn, um, but I wanted to share them with you before I put them away, thinking about future knitting plans. And um, yeah, you know, that's kind of how I'm preparing at the moment we aren't going mad we're slowly sorting out the house a bit i'm really slowly sorting out the spare room because the one thing that's really surprised me i didn't realize my energy levels would plummet so quick um i thought that was a towards the end situation um but i'm feeling a lot better than i was um it's just been a bit of a reality check where you know maybe you just can't keep going constantly for 10 12 hours a day without feeling a bit rubbish by the end of it and maybe I just need to do you know like an hour or two at a time and then take a break um and so big full scale sort outs aren't really that practical um and I've been enjoying reading a lot more um because I think maybe 
my energy levels for knitting aren't as high as, as they were. I have actually been reading and that's something that I used to do a lot of. I studied literature at university for four years and since discovering knitting I've pretty much stopped reading. Um, which is something that kind of made me sad but also I had been really enjoying the knitting so I wasn't really so worried. So I'm kind of enjoying rediscovering that. Although I am finding it hard to find books that I genuinely really enjoy reading. That's something I'm still trying to work out. Um, at the moment I'm kind of reading what I've got lying around but you know that feeling of getting really lost and stuck in a book and not wanting to do anything else. I haven't had that yet so I think I need to get some recommendations off some friends. Um, and yeah like I've got a few small craft sewing projects that are baby related I want to work on. But also really I have you know dresses I want to make for myself, some shirts, things like that. So this isn't going to become a baby podcast, don't worry. I'm aware at the moment there seems to be a lot of knitting podcasters having babies. <laughs> um, I don't know whether that's because that's the age of the people that I'm following. Um, you know, it was said to me many years ago that you get to a point where everyone you know is having children. I think maybe you just see more of the thing that you're thinking about. Um, but also I'm aware that it's a bit of a sore subject, um, a bit of a difficult subject for some people. And so it's not something that I'm going to try and go on about too much. Um, but obviously it's kind of impacting where I am at the moment and what we're doing um, and how we're living and how much time I have because at the moment I'm still working full time. Um, and that can be a lot when you're not feeling that great. <laughs> um, and I've probably had as much time off as I can have already in one go. So um, that's not great. But yeah, we're doing well. We're very happy. We're looking forward to it and yeah so there we go my big news not a secret anymore when this goes up um when you see this video hopefully we all have been told whether it's a boy or a girl i don't know whether i'll share that with you guys right away or not uh maybe i'll keep it a secret maybe i won't maybe it'll be obvious from things i'm making i don't know um we shall see i'm not really too bothered about keeping things secret um the main thing for me is to enjoy it as much as possible the knitting and the pregnancy and everything else because you know there is quite a lot of like rubbish stuff with pregnancy that's just not fun so um i want to enjoy all the bits of it that i can at this phase in life because um i mean we've got to make the most of it haven't we we've got to make the most of the situation we're in when we're in it um and the good bits when we can whether you're in my situation or not you know so yeah anyway I'm gonna end it there because I'm getting a bit babbly if I didn't edit out edit out all the weird bits of my partner coming in and out of the house then I'm sorry um we'll see how involved I get with the editing um but yeah I hope you're doing well again sorry to the person whose comment I deleted um <laughs> hope you weren't offended um, but it was just too soon um, when you were commenting, guessing that you thought I had a baby bump. Um, I didn't want to tell anybody yet, so I'm sorry. But yeah, that's where we are. Back to knitting the lovely projects um, and doing some other small bits and bobs. So thank you very much. And hopefully I won't be so gappy between videos because I do want to make the most of this child free time. Um, and really like enjoying my creativity and selfish time and doing what I want to do and not worrying about anybody else before that's a luxury I will no longer have but yeah thank you speak to you soon and I hope you have a good rest of your day week evening whatever goodbye